Hello everyone, Linda Israel here. And today I thought I would do a tutorial showing you how to make a Midori style cover. A Midori style cover has elastic bands that then you can slip in a journal and you can also remove it. So you don't have to permanently bind your signatures to the cover. You can make journals or mini journals inside that come out. So I have a piece of printed fabric this is something that I offer in my shop. We have an embroidery business and part of our embroidery business, we also have what's called a direct to garment printer and it allows us to print on fabric. This is permanent so that if you buy this fabric, even though it is 10 by 15, if you have another application for it, you can use it for that. But I made it specifically for making these journal covers and I'm selling the printed fabric so you can make your own. So I'm making the tutorial. So the printed portion of this is, like I said, 15 wide by 10 tall, and I leave a little bit of a border of white fabric. So if you're making this with fabric that you already have, you will probably need to make it somewhere around 17 by 12. I'm going to set this aside just a moment. I have here some chipboard. So a lot of people ask me, where do you get your chipboard? Well, because I also make chipboard pieces, I buy it wholesale, so I get thousands of pieces at a time. Now you as a home crafter may not be able to buy chipboard readily easily, but you can do something like save cereal boxes or bigger boxes that measure about for this journal cover six by nine in size. So when you buy your products, kind of look to see, hey, is that chipboard going to be big enough? In a box of cereal, you'll at least get two pieces of chipboard. For this journal cover, I like to have double the thickness. So if you can also get book board or something thicker like that, you can use that. You can also use old book pages or book covers. So I've got these four pieces that are, again, six inches wide by nine inches tall. And then I have two pieces that are an inch and a half wide by nine inches tall. And I'm going to glue these together so that they're thicker. I'll just use Aline's Tacky Glue so you can use whatever favorite glue that you like. And I'll just put a nice little generous amount down the middle. And then I will press these together and I'll do the same with the covers. All right. So I've got the cardboard or chipboard pieces ready to go. I'll lay my fabric. Now, since I'm using a white fabric and I, I find that I prefer to have two layers of fabric. So I have another piece of white fabric here because what I want to do is quickly take some glue and stay away from the printed portion. It just makes some dots going down the sides and we're going to glue these together just enough so it holds it together as one piece of fabric. You could also go to the sewing machine and just stitch around that outside edge, but it really doesn't need to be stitched. A little bit of glue is fine to help hold it together and basically kind of make this one unit. All right. So we can kind of see our image just a little bit because I used white fabric. And what this does, it gives us a little bit of cushion. Now, if you like your journal covers to be fluffier, you could put a thin layer of quilt batting. I like the warm and natural. It has a nice texture to it and you can get it in white or you can get it in ivory. So what I'm going to do now is I'm looking at my cover elements. So I'm going to basically center my chipboard. So I'm going to have to adjust it just a little bit from top to bottom. And I want a little bit of a gap between the cover and the spine. So I'm making sure that this is going to fold over and cover the chipboard pieces in the middle. And I think that's probably pretty good. My gap you know, I try to make it as thick as the chipboard is. So you kind of look at your chipboard. I don't have a, I've got a couple of pieces here. So if you were to take this chipboard and place it in between and then push that up against it, that's about the gap. Well, and of course I moved my paper, but that's about the gap that you want. You don't want a huge gap in there, but just enough that it'll be able to bend. All right. So what I like to do is I'll glue this middle part down. 
And this is why I like the second layer of fabric because the glue might seep through to the front of your cover. And because I have this layer of fabric behind what's going to be my exterior, the glue will stick to the inner one and won't seep, seep through to the front. All right, so I got a little bit of a gap. I'll glue this side down next. And then I'll glue this side down. All right, so now what I want to do is we're going to fold in the corner. So I'm going to start up here and I'll put a little bit of glue just in this corner. Now I'm going to sew. If you're not going to sew your cover, then you'll want to put a nice thin coat of glue on here. You can use a paintbrush to thin it out just a little bit, but you want a nice little thin coat of glue if you're not going to sew. I am going to sew it. So basically, I'm just putting enough glue to hold it in place until I get to the sewing machine and stitch it in place. Now, if you don't like this excess fabric, you can remove it. It's not really going to get in the way, and I don't mind that it's kind of long. I'll just put some glue right on this edge, even into that corner a little bit, and then I'm going to fold it over to the inside. Now again, if you're not going to sew, then you want to put a nice generous amount of glue in here to hold that fabric. All right, so there is the fabric attached to our chipboard. And we'll go to the sewing machine in just a moment, but I wanted to show you what else I did. I happen to have some 12 by 12 cardstock. So one sheet of cardstock worked really well for my inside covers. And what I will do is go to my sewing machine and we'll do some stitching on here. So I cut two pieces. These are five and three quarters by eight and three quarters in height. Five and three quarters wide, eight and three quarters in height. And then I had a strip that was left over and it's about three inches wide, maybe three and a quarter. And that's going to go on the inside here. But I also want to have pockets. So I just cut some other chipboard or uh, cardstock that I have here, and that's going to go on top. So we're going to go to the sewing machine and I'll stitch across the top here just for decoration purposes on these two pieces. Then I will stitch all the way around this cardboard. I'll also stitch here and here on this, I keep saying cardboard, cardstock. And I will also stitch all the way around the outside edge of my journal cover. So let's go over to the sewing machine. This is my sewing lamb cam. If you ever come to one of my live streams, you'll see that I will show that little sewing uh, lamb that we're getting ready to sew. Now, I have a regular sewing machine. I have it set up for a zigzag stitch. Now, I changed my stitch length to be two and two for the width and the stitch um how close it is, dip, depth and width, I think it's what it is, stitch length, stitch length and width. So I'm going to sew right across the top here, and I've just got a regular needle, I've got regular thread, and I'll just stitch on here. And then I'll flip this around, and I'll stitch the other side. I do this because it's for decorative purposes. I like the look, and now I'm going to stitch across this piece here. All right, so now that I have this piece stitched, what I wanna do is line it up to the bottom of what's going to be the inside cover, and I'll stitch across to keep that put together. You could put a little bit of glue, but you do wanna make sure that your glue is dry before you start stitching with your sewing machine. Number one, it will cause your paper to tear. Number two, it'll gum up your needle and you'll have to clean it off. So it's just better wait for the glue to dry before you start sewing. When I come to a corner and I wanna rotate, I will leave the needle down and raise my presser foot and rotate my paper or fabric. Then I'll put my presser foot back down and then continue stitching. All right, so one inside cover is complete. So now I'll just do that again on the other side. And now this side is done. So now what I'll do is I'll take the cover and I'll start, generally I like to start on the back and I'll stitch all the way around. All right, it's been stitched around. We'll go back to our desk. 
All right, so it's been stitched all the way around. I'm not going to put a closure on this because I'm not really sure how I want to end up making the cover 100%. So right now I'm just making the foundation, if you will, that I can later punch holes if I want to add grommets or if I want to run some fibers through that or I could wrap the outside with a tie. And sometimes you may not even need a closure. What I'll do now is make sure that I've got it right side up. So I'm looking at my journal and I want this dragonfly up. I'll take the center piece and it's going to be glued in the middle. So now's where you want to have a generous amount of glue. I'm going to put glue right along where the stitch line is, along these edges, and down the middle. Then I'll also come in here and I'm going to put glue on the chipboard spine. And then I'll place this down. We're going to get it in the center from left to right and top to bottom. And I'll use my bone folder to help smooth out. I'm okay if glue seeps out. It's okay. Don't freak out. And then I'm going to find where these meet and where that crease is going to be. And I'm just going to gently use my bone folder and fold my cover and get that paper to go down in that crease. And I like to turn it around and do the other side. Be careful and don't rip your paper. You want to make sure that you're just lightly creasing it. All right, so I'm just kind of testing it. Looks pretty good. All right, I'll smooth this out some more. And then again, making sure that I didn't rotate my journal around, my cover around, I'll glue these into place on the front and the back. So at this point, you can stop. And if you wanted to attach your signatures directly to the spine, so I'll get a journal here. So let's pretend that this was a signature, then I could just take this, poke my holes all the way through my cover, and I could attach it. Or if you would rather have had a fixed, uh, what do you call that, uh, hidden spine, before you laid down your pockets, you could have attached it to this inner piece, glued that down, and then done it this way. But I want this to be a Midori style. So I've got a little template here that I use. The fabric, by the way, is fabric that I printed using Norella's design for the Dancing Dragonfly journal kit. That's part of the subscription box that I have in my shop. And I was looking at the patterns that she had and asked her if she would help me make one big enough to print for the cover like this. And she did, and I love it. So I hope that you like it as well. It's part of, again, the Dancing Dragonfly subscription box. So here's what I'm gonna do. I've got a little template that has three basic lines on it because I want to make a set of two holes. I need two holes. I was trying to remember how many holes I need. I need to look at my original cover. <laughs> It's been a while since I've made a Midori cover, so I need to punch three holes in my cover here. So I'm gonna use this as a template and come in, it's almost a quarter of an inch from the edge and I'm making sure that my little template is in the center. So I'll put a mark right there, right there, and right there, kind of in that stitched area. And I'll do it on the other end as well. And then I have my crocodile hole punch. And so I want the smaller, not the big one. I want the smaller size. I think this is one, it's not, it might be one eighth of an inch, not a quarter of an inch, an eighth of an inch. And I think one sixteenth is too small because of the cord we're going to use. So I'll just line this up and it'll punch all the way through the chipboard, the fabric, and the card stock at one fail swoop. That's why I like this tool. I'm a firm believer that you invest in tools that make your life easier. And when you do invest in those tools, you want them to be quality tools. So don't always go for it if it's, you know, $5 less. It might not be as sturdy as you want it to be. All right, so we have six holes that we've punched in there. And I have some elastic cord. Um, 
I think this, this says Hildy and Joe. I think this may be something that I picked up at Joanne's Crafts. I know that Darcy has one of these. I'll have a link in the description box where you can get it off of Amazon. And by the way, if you use my links in my description box to purchase things off of Amazon, I greatly appreciate that because I get a little bit of a commission. If you're going to buy anyway, please use my link. All right. So now what I need to do is we're going to start in the middle here. Oh, wait. I start here. I always get this backwards. I'm going to start here, go to the inside. So this is going to be on the outside. And then I'm going to come down to the center hole. And I'll go to this side. go back up to the top and then we're going to go back through this first hole and it may be difficult to go through so I'll use like a pair of scissors I'll use my awl I'll use whatever I can get my hands on to help poke that through that hole There we go. All right, so I'll adjust this because I don't need that much of a length. So I'll just kind of back this back a little bit. Right about there. And you want these not super tight because it'll cause your cover to bow. You just want it tight enough that they're sturdy in here so your journal won't flop around, but not so tight that it's bowing your cover. So then I'm going to come down here and I'll just hold my finger there for a moment and then I'm going to come back up this way and then I'll trim this off. I need more elastic. I'm almost out. All right, so I'll come down this side and then we're going to go back through this second hole in the middle. Sometimes I can get it to go without a pushing tool. Sometimes I have to have a tool. All right. So again, I'll adjust the lengths of the cords and then I'll bring them to the center. And personally, I like to just tie it off with a simple knot because elastic can eventually wear a little bit and stretch out. This way I can untie it and make it tighter. I just cut my cord so that it doesn't stick out past the bottom of my journal. And now it's ready. Where did I lay down the journal? Here it is. That we can put a journal. I'll pick one in the middle. right inside the cover there. So now we have this beautiful journal cover that we've made. And then I have a journal that I can take out. It's a journal insert. Can set my cover aside, write in my journal. If I wanna change the journals around because I love this cover and I wanna use it for all of my journals, I can do that as well. Now I will say what I plan to do is I'm gonna take this outside and spray it with some Scotch Guard because it's white fabric and I don't wanna get finger smudges all over it. So I do recommend you put some Scotch Guard on it. And then if you get something on it, you just kind of gently wipe it away. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed seeing my take of making a Midori style journal cover using the Dancing Dragonfly fabric that I offer in my shop. You know, come and see me on Mondays at 3.45 p.m. Central Standard Time. Do check the description box below for links to my groups, the Friendly Junk Journal People Facebook group, as well as by Linda Israel and my website, lindaisrael.com. I greatly appreciate you watching today. If you have any questions, please use that comment box down below. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe, give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends so that they can be inspired to create as well. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. Bye, everybody.